Hi guys, this is my review for If In Doubt Always Follow Your Nose, a GBHL 90 event in High Wycombe. Uh, so this is my tournament review for If In Doubt Always Follow Your Nose, GBHL 90 in High Wycombe, uh, hosted by the Tabletop Republic. Uh, it's an escalation event, so over one day there's four games, two of them uh, 400 points and then the second two at 600 points. Uh, so I am denied about what army to bring for a little while because I almost thought went to scouts which seems to be my go-to at 400 points now for some reason. Um, but in the end settled on Helm's Guard. So Helm's got a good profile, uh, he's fight 5, strength 5 but he's got uh, a two-handed sword and burly so effectively strength 7. Uh, defense 7, 3 attack, 3 wounds, uh, high courage and then 3-3-1 uh, three, three, might well invade. Uh, he's got the Horn of Helm Hammerhand, so he gets plus one, well obviously everyone on the board gets plus one courage, uh, Helm becomes fearless when he charges. He also has the Hammerhand rule, which I'll never use unless the sword gets shattered, where he can uh, punch people with his fists. Um, and then he also has the uh, the, the uh, six inch bubble in the, in the Legion, which uh, gives plus one fight value to friendly warriors, so not other heroes. Uh, and then in the Legion you can use throwing spears uh, to spear support and uh, yeah, finally in the Legendary Legion Helm gets Mighty Hero and Free Hero at combats which is why you take the Legion because obviously Helm then becomes an absolute beast um, so the list I went for was Helm Hammerhand with Horse uh, six warriors of Rohan with shield and throwing spears, one with banner and shield, three riders, and then eight royal guard with throwing spears. Uh, so obviously at 400 you can only really get one warband because Helm takes up quite a lot of points. Uh, but you only really need one warband, I think. Um, and I know you can do sort of an all mounted sort of thing going on there where you get the, uh, the uh, fight five royal guard. Uh, but I think not getting the plus one strength on the charge from the sort of vanilla Rohan or Rise of Dead and Legendary Legion sort of leads me to think that if you wanted to do that you're probably better off just doing Rise of Dead in. Um, obviously the Royal Guard will get the Fight 5 and the uh, plus one strength as well which makes them a lot better. Uh, so personally I think with Helm I tend to just go, go foot heavy with a sprinkling of cavalry. So what I didn't want to face was other lists with sort of a big hitter, so I don't want to come up against an Azog or an Aragorn or a Boromir or something like that, because Helm is very good, but he's also only fight five. So whilst he does have mighty heroes, he's gonna be able to sort of call the strikes. He also starts at a disadvantage, so he's normally sort of one or two lower than whoever he's striking against. And the other thing I really didn't want to come come up against was elves, because obviously he hates elves because he can't. You can't do the free hero combat because you often end up striking instead to make sure you can actually <laughs> actually win the fight. Because um, you know when you call, if you decide to just call hero combat, that's when an elf gets you know rolls a six and then uh, you know wins the roll off because the elven blade or something annoying like that. Um, yes, yeah, so that was my list at four hundred. At uh, six hundred, I basically just added a second warband. Uh, so I modified the first warband slightly, and that I gave to Rise of Rohan um, throwing spears. Uh, then my second more band was just captain with horse, heavy armor, and shield. Uh, no throwing spears um, for some reason. Uh, four warriors of Rohan with throwing spear and shield. And then two riders with uh, throwing spear. Um, four Rohan royal guard with throwing spear. And then two Rohan outriders uh, who are actually outwalkers because I don't tend to buy the horse for them. Um, and this sort of does a similar sort of thing in the helm doesn't have march, so the captain's there for a march. And you also can't take named heroes, so I think that limits it to uh, Captain and King's Huntsman, but the King's Huntsman obviously can't lead enough troops, so I think at 600 you're sort of locked into a captain really. Um, the Outriders is sort of just to hang out at the back and tag objectives and uh, use um, use the heroes stand fast and sort of no matter the range, because uh, they're special vanguard, I think it's vanguard rule. Um, and also I think they're a point more than a warrior Rohan on foot with bow and I think they're quite a lot better so uh, that's pretty handy. Um, so in terms of sort of the strength of this list it's sort of fairly obvious isn't it you have a fight five shield wall so you're a little low on the model count but 
if you sort of position the banner right, then obviously you could be rolling three dice uh, at fight five in you know shield wall on shield wall thing. You've also got a whole load of throwing spears, which is nasty and sort of forces people to come and deal with you. Because uh, obviously you've got the eight inch range of the throwing spear. And obviously this list is sort of Helm does everything in that <laughs> Helm's obviously just absolutely disgusting. So if, if Helm gets a combat it's probably killing to be fair. Um, and obviously the mighty hero and free hero at combat. I don't know if there's anyone else in the game who gets that. Because I know models get free hero at combat or mighty hero. But I don't know if any other models combine it. So he is very, very good. But it's just the fight five is a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, there's not really too much to say other than that. Um, just sort of pushing pushing the shield wall forwards, pushing helm forwards and sort of seeing, seeing what happens really. Uh, and then using... I tend to use the cav more conservatively to either sort of pick pick targets or sort of hang behind the shield wall and then charge into any gaps that open or you know, stuff like that. Uh, so that's the list. So on to game one. Uh, so game one I was against uh, Richard Turnbull's Defenders of the Shire, 400 points. Uh, so he had uh, Mary with 15 battling brandy bucks, uh, Peregrine, Captain of the Shire, uh, with two Hobbit Sheriffs, and then Baldo with six archers, Farmer Magnet on his own with his dogs, um, and then uh, Frodo with five more archers, so 36 models, 11 bows, pretty scary. Uh, we were playing hold ground, so that's the one where you mouse from onto the board and then try and control the middle. Uh, and then random game end up broken. Um, so we're sort of talking beforehand. That seems like either I'd sort of I'd have to come on first with Maelstrom, and then he'd just sort of go on the other side, and then just shoot me to pieces with all the archers, uh, or at least shoot Helm off his horse, and then even things up somewhat. Or I'd come on second, and then hopefully just get Helm into stuff and prevent him shooting at me and sort of doing that. So obviously. I won the first priority, which was not good. Uh, but then what was quite good is I then rolled a one for Helm's Warband, so he didn't come on turn one. Um, so I managed to get out of that one. Uh, and basically, he managed to get Frodo and Baldo together, uh, up sort of behind some trees uh, on the east side of the board. So they were sort of there. And then I put, I think I put. Mary and Pippin together in in the sort of yeah eastern corner of the southern southern board edge. Uh, so there's a bit of a distance between them, uh, and they yeah, obviously they sort of moved on moved on turn one. Uh, turn two, um, I can't remember who won priority to be honest. Uh, I think it might have even been me actually, uh, but I basically brought Helm on. I think I got got a three so I might up to a four uh, and then I sort of stuck him on the southern board edge and I brought him on next to uh, Mary and Pippin's warbands so the idea was if I killed everyone in that warband including Mary and Pippin I think he'd still be one away from broken so the idea was I'd murder all of those guys hopefully not lose too many people at all um, and then sort of push on push on to the middle and I hopefully by then should you know, be a lot more even in terms of numbers, and then I can sort of, you know, just send some chaff to trigger trigger the traps, which had been uh, set up in a bit of a minefield formation around the objective, as uh, obviously kind of makes sense to do. Um, yeah, so it's not not too much to say. Uh, I kind of had a bit of a shield wall right by the board edge, uh, and he was sort of tying him up with some battling brandy books, and I sort of, yeah kept my my banner and probably about ten guys down there. Um, he killed a weird amount of guys, to be fair, because I think when he uh, when he won the combat, he seems to, seemed to keep rolling the six to uh, do the wound, so that was pretty good. And it, obviously there was a lot of uh, piercing striking as well, with the battling brandy bucks, so uh, yeah, that, that was quite handy as well. Uh, Helm sort of just chopped a few hobbits up, but nothing major too early on. Um, I suppose, yeah, a lot of my guys were sort of tied down there, but I sort of trickled trickle some guys towards the middle of the board, including Helm. Uh, but Richard brought on uh, Farmer Maggot from, from the ambush with his dogs, uh, to sort of run interference with Helm and try and block him and his little squad uh, away from the board edge. Uh, and that's where Helm really started 
doing stuff because he, I think he heroic combated off, off Farmer Magga into a couple of hobbits, killed them, and then the turn after, I think I won heroic. Uh, the heroic move roll off, and uh, yeah, basically the turn after he went into uh, Pippin, and turn after he went into Merry, and then turn after he went into Frodo. Um, so he was a bit of a beast. I think he racked up. Uh, yeah, four hero kills and then uh, also a bunch of hobbits uh, and then basically my guys were just sort of grinding through uh, through the hobbits towards the sort of border you came on from trickled trickled through to the middle uh, I basically thought I'd left it way too late because obviously Farmer Maggot deployed there um, sort of blocking my my warband from the middle it meant that I broke him which was bad because I was still far away from the middle. Um, but I had about four guards sort of running towards the objective. Uh, two were shot down by those, which was not great, but I think two, two, one or two made it to the middle, uh, which was quite handy. But I think what came in clutch really is the game didn't end first couple of turns it could have done. Um, and Baldo, who had basically done nothing the whole game, and I kind of figured he was going to wait in the middle and throw a stone at home or something. Uh, he rolled double one on his courage test, and with no horn of the Ridder Mark, because Mary was dead by this point, and no, sort of no other nonsense he could do, he was off, and then that got rid of, you know, all of the heroes were off by then, and then the hobbits were on courage tests, and to be fair, he failed quite a few of them. Um, so it kind of flipped quite significantly from a, um, I can't remember the exact score, but I think I was going to be on five for breaking and killing his leader whilst I was unbroken and Helm was unwounded. Um, and I think he was going to probably double me in the middle in a couple of, yeah, sort of, yeah, double me in the middle. So I think things were looking great for me. And then, yeah, a couple of, uh, yeah, last couple of turns it totally flipped in Boulder running away, a bunch of hobbits running away, and then Helm was able to get in the middle, uh, yeah, sort of charge in, and then I think he heroic combat off Frodo, dismounted, and then killed a bunch of guys by the objective, so he sort of cleared up, cleared everyone up really. Um, so I, I think I got away with that one to be honest, because I basically left my guys by the board edge for way too long and broke him sort of too quickly with no one near the objective. Uh, but essentially, I was I got a bit of a pass through his sort of poor courage and Helm chopping stuff up and the game not ending immediately. Uh, so that was that. So that was twelve nil, first game, uh, which yeah, I'm quite lucky to get twelve nil. Uh, but yeah, on to the next game. Uh, so game two saw me on the top table, which is a bit weird. Um, I was playing Paddy, who brought a we well, brought Sulla down as his leader, uh, five Serpent Riders and then five Harridan Raiders with Bow and War Spear, and then a Great Beast. Uh, and we were playing Clash by Moonlight, so I was pretty worried about his shooting from the Serpent Riders and obviously the Orcs from the Great Beast. Because uh, he's got 22 models, so so there's a case that I basically have to deal with the Great Beast. Um, I can't sort of just play, play around it, <laughs> sort of have to go in and deal with him. So I deployed in a shield wall with with a cavalry on the flanks, just to yeah, just sort of standard formation really. I wasn't too sure what Paddy was going to do, but because of the reduced range of missiles, it actually helped me quite a lot, I think. So he came forward and had to deal with me, and I sort of pushed forwards and spread my dudes out a little bit and sent my cavalry around and. Did that thing where I left a helm sized gap in my formation for him to do stuff. Yeah, so turn two or three, we were lined up across from each other, and the turn before we got stuck in, he had a bunch of bows, I had a bunch of throwing spears. I think I hit with a load of my throwing spears, but didn't do too much damage. I think I dismounted one, killed another, something like that. And I think his bows were essentially ineffective. Uh, I think. Yeah, the dice rolling wasn't too hot there. Um, but I realised I set Helm up quite poorly for a heroic move. 
um, and it was going to be quite an important turn as we were set up so that I would basically be able to charge the Great Beast if I won the roll off, uh, and also some of the cavalry, which was a bit close. Um, or he was going to win the roll off and then just stomp a bunch of Rohad and stomp a path to hell. Uh, so I lost that roll off and he literally killed six guys <laughs> in one uh, one sort of stampeding session which was not great because I had 19 models so I was not a million miles off broken which was very 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 sad um, I obviously got all his cavalry charging in as well I believe which was doubly bad um, I did start to get mildly salty with my dice actually because it seemed like nothing nothing I could do was working dice wise and uh, sort of losing all the roll offs and uh, um, Helm kept charging the great beast as well because uh, obviously the mighty hero means I'm just constantly calling heroics uh, and to be fair the great beast basically didn't move the rest of the game because I, I think the captain called one more move but I want the roll off so he was sort of stuck because I could just call core heroics for free basically and Helm wasn't in danger of being tagged uh, for most of the game um, so the idea is obviously to stick Helm in and the beast uh, didn't even need to strike up actually uh, obviously win the combat bog him on the head for fours um, do that a couple of times great beast dies happy days um, so the first time I did that I won the combat and then fluffed and I think I got of one, two, and three, and I was actually looking at it for ages. I think Paddy was trying to figure out what I was thinking, and then uh, eventually found out because I spent all three might just to put two wounds on it. Uh, so high risk strategy there, but I figured the free combats and the mighty hero would sort of help me out. Uh, he passed both courage tests. I think one of them he had to spend a will on, which was you know not too bad, um, and me and my, my warriors were sort of a mixture of getting stomped or winning the combats and then just completely failing to kill so I, I wasn't really killing that much which was quite frustrating uh, and Sullivan was sort of slowly chopping through through some of my royal guard which was also a bit sad um, and then the second time Helm had a go at the beast he won the combat again and completely fluffed again uh, and to add the insult to injury, I believe he got shot off his horse. Uh, I can't remember if... I can't remember when I used the fate. It might have been to prevent a wound on him from uh, the orc archers, because the orcs were obviously just busy pounding away at people and chipping a chipping couple of people away. Um, but the situation was bad uh, about halfway through the game, uh, because Helb was dehorsed. Uh, my warriors were sort of you know, not, not really anywhere, and I think I was broken by this point as well. Uh, and I think Helm even lost the fight against the Great Beast, which wasn't great, because then he was knocked prone. And Sullivan by this point was very much <laughs> on on the scene. Uh, so it ended up in a weird situation where I, I could use my mighty hero to call a heroic move to stand up and potentially charge the Great Beast, but I couldn't reach Sullivan. Um Or I could save it for a strike, but I'd be on my butt, so I wouldn't be making... I wouldn't be making strikes. Uh, and I think by this point, my warriors were... You know, I wasn't actually a billion miles off being 25%ed, my warriors weren't really killing stuff, and I just thought, Helm has to do something here, otherwise we're in trouble. Uh, so I called the move to stand up so he could do strikes and Paddy saved his final might on Sullivan for the strike. Um, well, I can't to be honest, I can't remember specifically what happened, but I think Sullivan went in and called the strike. I remember Paddy fluffed one uh, one massive roll, and I think it was this roll, and Helm somehow won this one, I think, and bonked the great beast on the head, and obviously a bunch of orcs died from fall damage. Um, and then the following turn. I think I just put Helm into Sullivan and uh, just won on the combat and basically just one pumped Sullivan. So the game's sort of completely flipped on the basis of a couple of lucky rolls there. Because obviously I guess Great Beast can be quite swingy, but then obviously the combat against Sullivan was quite swingy. 
yeah, so I'd have, I got rid of the Great Beast and Soledad mostly through luck. Uh, and I think then I was sort of just chopped away a few warriors. And I think I think Paddy 20, um, was down to 25%. Because uh, obviously the thing was is I could just call a heroic move every turn to get, obviously helped to move first, to get his uh, stand fast up and my warriors stayed right till the end. And obviously the Royal Guard had bodyguard anyway. Whereas once uh, once Soledad was gone and I started tagging the Chieftain you know, at the start of every turn, it meant that uh, obviously Orcs and Haradrim started trickling away with courage. So that one ended 8-4. So I, uh, in fact, I don't think Help was touched then because I think he... So he got three for breaking me, uh, and then he had his orc, uh, his orc captain from the Great Beast still alive at the end of the game to give him four points, and then I killed his leader, uh, broke him, and then I killed more enemy hero models, uh, and I had at least one left alive, so that was three from that. So again, I was quite lucky with that one. Uh, I think the first half of the game. I, I just kind of felt like I was getting a bit of a dicing and there wasn't really any way out and uh, I kind of played it as well as you can but I think with Great Beasts obviously sometimes you get stomped and sometimes you don't I suppose <laughs> but um, dice basically turned around at the critical moment for me with a couple of Helm combats and obviously if Helm wins combats he's going to be sort of bonking, bonking stuff on the head. Um, Apart from the first two turns, I was in combat where it was just trash. But anyway, so that was a, that was a really enjoyable game. <laughs> I was kind of bricking it for most of it, to be honest. But it turned out, uh, yeah, it ended up in my favour, I think. So I was quite pleased with game three for two reasons. Uh, we drew Lords of Battle, which is obviously good for me. Uh, and I drew uh, Nat, who was bringing, um, God, what's it called? Uh, Fell beings, fell beings of Mirkwood. Um, so obviously that that scenario and matchup favours me, but also I played that before at Contest Champions last year. It was a really good game, so I imagined I was in for another good game, which uh, is good to stop you from flagging after the uh, lunch break. So we're up to six hundred points here. Uh, so Nat had. Uh, Razgush with basically a bunch of orcs with a mixture of uh, shields and spears, a couple of orc trackers, one merc with spider, one bat swarm, uh, and then spider queen again with a bunch of orcs with shields or spears, two more orc trackers, one bat swarm, uh, and then an orc captain of wag again with a bunch of orcs with shield and spear and then uh, one tracker. So obviously the key pieces there are Razgush who's um, yeah, just a bit of a hitter but not not invulnerable sort of thing. Uh, and the Spider Queen who can be a glass cannon uh, but also has heroic strike and defence which makes her really irritating to deal with. So you sort of think you just go, to go in and slap her if you win the combat and then she just calls the defence and then it's just suddenly she's got the longevity but you know still if she wins a the combat then she's gonna annihilate stuff and drink my tears. So yeah, so that was that. Um, so we were playing on my Moria board actually, and we basically just set up opposite each other in two shield walls, uh, which kept it very simple. Uh, I obviously left a helm sized gap in my shield wall, uh, and also a captain sized gap in my shield wall, so those guys could charge in. And then they started the game seven inches away from the orcs, so they weren't in danger of being charged. Apart from by the bat swarm, obviously you'd have to be a lunatic just to charge them in on their own. Um, so I lost priority turn one, and this is what I'm still debating in my head. I called a heroic move with my captain because I thought that I wanted to control where I picked the fights and where I put Helm in and where I put the captain in and I wanted to throw all my throwing spears and Nat didn't contest it which is interesting it's probably probably the right call I would have thought um, but yeah I basically went in and my throwing weapons did nothing <laughs> it was like devastating um, 
But what I did do is I did two catastrophic errors turn one. Um, so error number one, uh, because of where the heroic move ended, I ended up with a staggered shield wall, which set the spider queen up for this perfect hurl where she was going to hurl a dude, knock him off his horse and hit six, six dudes. Uh, so sort of three, um, three columns of my shield wall. Uh, so three of the royal guards, three just normal dudes. Um, and that was really, really dumb. Uh, so I think only the guy who got thrown and then one of the warrior of Rohan died. Helm was dehorsed, so that was just one turn he wasn't killing stuff. Um, so I got off lightly there, because uh, he stopped short of dehorsing my captain as well. So that wasn't horrific. Uh, but worse was to cut. Well, I don't know if it's worse. Uh, something equally stupid was to come, uh, because I had basically very, very carefully protected Helm from. Uh, being bat swarmed or spider broodlings to sort of pull him out of the combat to sort of fight something pointless. Um, and I also protected the banner as well from flyers or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I forgot to protect the captain. So I had riders that could have very, very easily done that, but I didn't. And the uh, captain, uh, turn one, had a bat swarm in his booty and then four orcs to the front. Because uh, obviously I charged him into, you know, two orcs with uh, spear support, thinking you know he's going to make light work of that. So a bat swarm trapped him, and suddenly I was just like, he's going to die, isn't he? <laughs> uh, somehow he didn't die. So I can't. I think that just rolled pretty trash, basically, which saved the captain's bacon, which was very lucky. Um, so yeah, I I finished the first turn. Uh, down on the kill tally like 7-2 and I think something I could be guilty of is if I annoy myself with this really stupid play I can get really frustrated and then like make errors of judgement in the game and sort of let it, let it sort of uh, I don't know sort of fix it or something I did wrong three turns ago rather than thinking about what I'm doing like sort of here and now but I sort of called myself an idiot several times and then sort of put it behind me uh, and the short version, I suppose, is that my warriors just kicked the crap out of his warriors. Um, it's obviously fight... I was pretty much fight five everywhere uh, because of Helm's buff. And even where I wasn't, I could often get the fight four. So I was basically just winning combat. So I was killing him on a five. He was sometimes killing me on a five. But if I put a royal guard in, obviously that's another six, which makes me a lot better. Uh, Nat did set up a couple of good plays. One was... Uh, trying to get Razgush into uh, Helm, who was sort of battling the Spider Queen, who called um, called a defence one turn, called a strike another turn, uh, and I was lucky not to lose Helm when he lost the combat against the Spider Queen. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure he was left on one wound. It was pretty dicey. <laughs> I think it was a fate or die situation. Uh, I think I had the mighty hero left or something like that, but it was sort of, you know, if I rolled a one or a two, Helm's just dead and then suddenly things go to pot. But it didn't didn't turn out that way. Uh, so yes, yeah, so my warriors pushed his warriors around uh, and I was able to tie Razgush up with, you know, just like five chaff. Um, and Razgush tried to make his way around into Helm, like I said, but didn't didn't really get anywhere or do anything, which was good. I think I did eventually... Did I kill this? I, yeah, I did eventually kill the Spider Queen. Because um, I think she'd run out of run out of my... So obviously that turn, I just struck with her and just boxed her on the head and that was that. Uh, it was an interesting play with the Merkwood Spider, which we were talking about afterwards. Because um, obviously I was very conscious with the pillar. Uh, the spiders can actually run along the pillar with, I think it's swift movement, the rule is. Uh, so that basically put the Merkwood Spider from behind his line to behind my line and tried to get a couple of paralyzers off which paralyzed his own guy uh, before that tried to shoot into combat and then killed said paralyzed guy <laughs> with his own shooting so that, that orc was uh, fairly unlucky. Um, but yeah the spider basically just sort of got trapped and killed without doing too much because he, he couldn't chuck a paralyze in uh, against Helm or, or sort of anyone around there because that's where the Spider Queen and Razgush were so 
I think he sort of used him as a flanking force and sort of see what see what happened and in the end he sort of got bopped on the head which was quite lucky. Um that was that really. Uh yeah, so it was like seven seven two at the end of turn one and I think turn two it was, it was a point where my throwing weapons just did the absolute business. Um and I think in the end I had I must have had like thirty odd kills and he had uh like probably just under fifteen or something. So um yeah that was a uh, that was another victory for me. The uh points were eight one. So that is because he wounded my leader for his one point. Uh, I didn't touch his leader, but I broke him and I doubled his kill tally, so that's eight points. So I was missing out on uh, points for leader kill and then the two extra points for tripling. But I will take 8-1 to be honest, because uh, I know that's a good player and I tried to not put a foot wrong. And I, I even said that, because like, I know he's a good player, I'm basically just not, <laughs> not going to let up at all. <laughs> just Because obviously as soon as you do, that's when that's when errors are made. Uh, like, I, like I did in turn one, I didn't want to repeat that. So I was quite pleased because Obviously, the scenario favoured me, but that's also a good player. So I was I was quite pleased to win that one, to be honest. Uh, and to be honest, I didn't put a, f a foot wrong. I would say after turn one, uh, so I think I was sort of shaken a bit by my mistake, and then it just kind of meant that actually I didn't put a foot wrong the rest of the game and did everything I needed to. I think so. I was I quite pleased with my performance uh, turn two onwards as well. Um, but yeah, that was a good game. So uh, on to the last game. So I found myself on the top table in the last match of the day, which was unusual for me to be honest. There was another game between Zaheer and uh, Cam, the, they were also both on three wins, so potentially one of them could have done it, but I think because of because of victory points, uh, I was playing Jay uh, Acharya, who was first and I was second, and then Zaheer and Cam were third and fourth. So the probability was I think the winner of this game is going to win the tournament, uh, which is obviously no pressure. Um, so Jay was bringing just a vanilla um, Isengard list. So he had Lurtz, uh, six Uryx with crossbow, seven with pike, and then Crabane. Uh, Rasku with six Uryx with crossbow, six with pike, and then Ugluck with two Uryx, three with shield, and then five with pike. Yeah. Uh, so obviously I had a lot of models, a lot of shooting, uh, but no banner, so that was interesting. Um, but I guess when you're rolling that many dice, the idea is you don't need a banner. So, <laughs> um, so we were playing Domination. Uh, we set up the objectives more or less in the sort of standard, uh, standard way, so they evenly spread across the board. Uh, Jay deployed probably within six inches of his board edge and I obviously got the impression that I was basically to come to him and get shot at and I undernared about like well do I just deploy back and just sort of say no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge and you, you have to move to me and you think so I'll have three objectives you have two if that suits me <laughs> um, but I guess what he'd do is he'd just sort of edge forwards his crossbows uh, and we sort of end up in the same situation but he'd have more of the board behind him. So I thought actually if I march with my captain to one uh, but then sort of march the infantry around him to like hide him for, for the, shoot, uh, the shooting phase um, then that means I'd only cop two turns of shooting which is not bad and one of those turns I'd be throwing spears so that's what I went for in the end um, and Jay's shooting was absolute <laughs> absolute trash um, so turn one he, what was it he had yeah he had like uh, 13 shots or something not one of them hit uh, so I think he what did he do he, like, he, he rolled like I don't know he must have rolled like 10 crossbow shots or something and none of them hit on a 4 plus uh, so that was weird, but I sort of took that as a good omen. Uh, second turn, he took five off, which, to be fair, was also not horrific. And 
Um, so over two turns of shooting, five losses to crossbows is not too bad. Uh, and I also chucked a bunch of spears at him and killed fewer rooks in return. So I think I killed two and you kill five. Um, and my shield wall was opposite his shield wall by that point. Uh, he won priority on the following turn. Um, it did cross my mind as to whether I'd want to call a heroic move. But I saw that he'd set up in a concave formation. So obviously, I guess the idea then would be that, you know, if I charge him in, it's going to favour him for picking combats and then getting traps and all that sort of thing, um, just because of how the bases work. So I thought I'd forego go that turn of throwing spears into combat, let him come to me, which is what he did. Um, and that was, yeah, that that was that was that. I think uh, I think I did my standard thing of uh, leaving a helm-sized gap uh, so the helm couldn't be charged, and then there was a little gap for him to run through and tag some stuff. Obviously, Jay set it up so he could only charge one model at a time, which you know makes sense, obviously. So combat, I actually did like. I think I. Basically, for the first half, two thirds of the game, I had the upper hand, I would say, because I kept winning the fight, because obviously I had the fight five because of the helm buff. Um, and I also kept rolling sixes, which is helpful. <laughs> um, so if I was on three dice, cause obviously I had two dudes normally, and then the banner reroll at fight five, I was getting the sixes quite a lot. And then, you know, to wound, I got the five. For the crossbows and pikes or um or the six for the shieldmen uh, i did seem to take all the shieldmen off pretty quickly which was nice um so yeah things were going well helm was slowly chopping away but obviously jay was positioning so he could only kill one or two guys a turn which is you know to be expected to be honest in, in this sort of thing but i was quite happy because i had you know i had three three objectives covered i could probably contest those two in a couple of turns and uh, I wasn't a million miles off breaking him to be honest um, obviously he doesn't take the courage tests um, until later but obviously broken is still an extra VP uh, help was totally untouched and things were going well um, but then there was a gap and I made a fateful decision uh, basically Vrasku and Lurtz were hanging out at the back and I killed a bunch of dudes to create a gap. Um, I think my problem was, yeah, I had two options. I could either get Hell out of there, but then I'd worry that I'd give the two captains, oh, sorry, obviously Frasco and Lurtz, I'd give them too much space and then they'd come and chop my infantry apart. And I was starting to lose guys by this point. Um, so I started to get a bit worried that a couple of turns of combat and that could be me in trouble. Uh, or I could charge him forwards into Vrasku and then leave it up to Jay whether he wants to risk his leader charging into my leader and having a strike off. Because I think basically if I win that strike off I will like almost certainly kill Lurtz and if I was lucky kill Vrasku as well. So. I sort of thought, well, I'm defence seven. That's still fives to wound from the um, from the captains, and then he had a couple of other dudes in, uh, which would be sixes, uh, which was great in theory until Helm was trapped. Because I think I went first, charged him in, and then I, there was like one guy I missed, and he got the trap on Helm, and it properly messed me up. Uh, and he put a couple of spear supports at the back. Uh, I was able to do a fairly cheeky move, to be honest. Um, so there was a little fight going on on the other side of these rocks with my captain, a few guys off, and a few cav, and some Uruks. Um, and I'd cleared up most of the Uruks, but in the process lost almost all my guys over there. But I had my captain on horse, and he'd just been chopping stuff up every turn. It was amazing. So I called a combat, charged through the the rock and then tag two spears off so then it was just Vrasku, Lurtz and the one Uruk so it was two fewer Uruks and four less strikes if uh, I lost the combat um, so I think I struck with Helm three or four times I think it was actually four times that day 
Um, three of the strikes, I rolled one. So this was one of those times. <laughs> so I lost the strike off. Uh, basically, the Urux flash killed Hell, which uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty gutting. It's one of those where it's kind of a high risk strategy and if it had paid off it would have you know would have seemed like a genius move because you know suddenly i kill you know Lurt and maybe Rasku and then you know what's what's left he you know keeps clear of Ugluck maybe or you know whatever and then just goes and kills a bunch of warriors and then he breaks and then he, you know hopefully that would that would be that really but I lose hell suddenly I don't have the fight five um and I sort of lost enough guys by that point where I was outnumbered and the Uruks basically broke through, killed my infantry. And unfortunately the game just went on a bit long. Because when I lost help I wasn't actually even broken, which was pretty good. And I think Jay was broken but not taking courage tests, because uh, obviously the Isengard 66% rule. Um, but I still had three objectives, so that that was, that was the thing. Uh, so I was on six victory points still, and Jay obviously had, in fact, uh, I was on seven because I'd broken him. So I was on seven, I think Jay was on, uh, he controlled the two at the back and he killed Hell. So he was on five. Um, and my aim was basically to keep him away from the middle. Um, yeah, middle objective and then contest his objectives just to try and sort of bump his uh, score downs from two to one for each of them but basically things just went wrong and uh, two of the three models on my back objectives ran away so uh, there was nothing I could do by that point and I think I, con I ended up contesting one of the objectives with my captain who like I said was just absolute beast and just refused to die which was awesome um, but yeah, lo losing hell and then those bad guys running away meant that yeah, there's nothing I could do at that point. So yeah, sadly I lost uh, 7-3. Yeah, it was pretty gutting to be honest because for the first yeah half or sort of two thirds of that, I felt like my dice were hot, everything was going according to plan. I had the board control. You know, it was all all good. And then yeah, hell got flash killed, and then that like yeah that just that was it so I lost the horn as well which yeah is not good um and obviously the, the point of the outriders is they can use a hero stand fast so uh, uh obviously with helm gone there's no horn and then the captain get, get kept getting tagged so he didn't have to do courage tests which meant the uh, outriders were on their own and yeah just kind of it sort of cascaded a bit there um so it's always gutting when you lose the sort of tournament winning match uh, and the worst thing is when you get like booted off the podium because it's, it's one of those things where if you if you lose the tournament winning match and you still come second or third you're like oh, I'll take it but I ended up fifth which is still a good finish for me out of 30 uh, GBHL 90 which is fairly competitive uh, but Jay obviously went on to win the tournament and so here beat Cam uh, to get all four of his wins but uh came second on VPs. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it all ended. So I was, it's one of those things where I'm quite pleased with fifth because you know, that's a good finish for me, but it's just, it's, I think it's just so tantalizing. I just felt like things were going really well. And uh, I was a bit nervous at first because obviously Jay's a very good player and I think he's near the top of the GPHL, like fourth or fifth or something. Uh, and I was just like, this is going to be a tough old game. And things just seemed to keep going my way and I kind of felt like I was on the cusp of just doing it and then it just all went horribly wrong. But that's that's the way it goes and I just obviously have to try and take it all the way next time I guess. But <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed that quick sum up of my latest tournament that I went to. Uh, I actually don't have any till Contest of Champions in October uh, but I've try and do a review for that one uh but yeah i'll uh, see you guys at the next one